All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor, and please help me make welcome Mr. Corbett Wall for the induction of Jackie Moore. I'm honored to be here tonight to uh, be the one to uh, introduce Jackie Moore into the Cattle Marketing Hall of Fame by his family and his, his crew at the barn there. I, uh, in 1999, I'd been working with uh, USDA Market News, and I got word that I was going to be transferred to St. Joe, Missouri, to St. Joe Stockyards, and I was going to be in charge of all ag market reporting in the state of Missouri. And so I started looking at it, and uh, I got to thinking immediately, why are we in St. Joe instead of Joplin? We should be in Carthage, Missouri, because that's where all the cattle are sold. Uh, his market was, was bigger than, you know, seven or eight of our markets put together. But uh, I, I, when I got to, to Missouri and started touring around, uh, I went to, we covered 20 sale barns around the state. And whenever I got to, to Joplin Regional Stockyards, I knew that something was different there. Uh, it was the Taj Mahal, for one thing. Uh, they had an elevator in the lobby. I'd never seen that before. Uh, that was pretty cool. And, uh, and then I got the opportunity to meet Jackie Moore, and it's nearly 25 years ago, and I remember it was like yesterday, uh, as soon as somebody introduced me to Jackie Moore, he stuck his hand out like that, or actually it was like that. And uh, he said, he stuck his hand out and he said, Jackie Moore. I get up at 5, I go to bed at 10, call me. <laughs> I learned a lot of things in that split second <laughs> that I was introduced to Jackie. First of all, when he walked up, I could tell he was a cowboy. I could tell he'd worn a hat before. He kind of knew what he was doing. Uh, when he stuck his hand out, I was pretty sure that he didn't lose that thumb in a pickle slicer which reminds me of a hair lip joke that I can't tell right now, but I could tell later in the casino. Uh, those of you that know it, you just enjoy that. But, uh, and, and, I knew, and I knew that he was a hardworking man, but, but that he would, he would still entertain my call. And he's been that way his, uh, the last 25 years that I've known him. But Jackie grew up, uh, he grew up uh, in a small farm in Stock City, Missouri. Uh, they, they were short on cash. They were, they were long on life lessons. Uh, I can still remember his dad, Claude. Uh, he, he was never an important man, but uh, he raised an important son. But uh, old Claude would sit there. He'd sit close to where I would sit when I reported to market down there. And he was, he was very content to watch his son selling all these people's cattle and doing most of it himself. I, I told Jackie after I'd, I'd been coming down there, and I would come down there quite a bit, because that's where all the business was being done. We started putting out open markets and mid-sessions like Oklahoma City, because he was getting as many cattle as Oklahoma City, so why, why shouldn't he get to do that too? And we did that, and he, and he started becoming more uh, widely known. But uh, I told Jackie, I said, Jackie, you start to sell at six o'clock in the morning. That's normal start time, is six o'clock in the morning. Jackie gets, he gets up early and he goes to work and he gets the work done in time that you can still get settled up and get the stuff you need to do so you can get to bed to get up the next morning and work. You don't start to sell at noon and the cattle come in full of sticks and then you gotta you try to you know answer for that all day. But, uh, Jack, Jackie starts that sale, and he would be there at 6 o'clock in the morning, auctioneering. And he would still be there when they got done with the 12,000 cattle at 6 o'clock at night. And he never got up. Maybe once or twice he, he, would, he would act like the cattle was slow coming in so he could take a leak off the back of the block. And then he'd come in. The man would auction there with a sandwich in his hand. And I said, Jackie... I know a little bit about auctioneering. I said, you can't keep doing that. You're going to hurt yourself. It's too much on you. He said, you know why I sell this wholesale myself? I said, no. This roof cost a million dollars. He told me that. Okay. 
I understand now. But uh, Jackie started out, went to auction school when he was 13 years old. He kind of knew what he wanted to do. Uh, he got hooked up with Frank Hall, uh, father of Bruce Hall, who's still with you, one of your main guys. Stand up, Bruce. Stand up, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce will put over 100,000 miles on a pair of boots every year, walking the yards for Jack and, and all of the stalker operations that you got. But I'll tell you what, I think they would take a bullet for each other. But uh, Frank Hall had an auction company, and you started selling there, didn't you? And that's when you and uh, Catfish got hooked up. Mark Harmon, where's Mark at? Stand up. Oh, you're doing a video. Mark is the, he's the, He's the everything. If you want to get to Jack, you got to go through Mark Harmon back there. I guarantee you, he's done it all. And, and, and I remember when I'd get there at 6 o'clock in the morning, you'd already been sorting for three hours a lot of times back in the day, didn't you? You might have been wearing high-top tennis shoes, though. But, <clears throat> but uh, he worked, he, uh, Jackie ended up going to the old Joplin stockyards and working. Uh, he worked for Bernie Wiles at a commission company there. And, uh, and Jack just worked harder than everybody else. He, he worked harder, he went faster. Uh, I talked to old guys that, that still bring their cattle to Joplin and their dads, their dads sold through Jackie years ago. And they said, you had to give him your cattle, he'd show up and be sitting on the back step when it was time to eat breakfast. Jackie didn't want to, he didn't want to interfere with their work day, he just wanted to visit with them at some point. And so, so he'd be there to drink coffee, and a lot of times you get a free breakfast out of the deal early in the morning. You did that, didn't you? People don't do that anymore. But, uh, but Jack, you know, Jack just worked harder than everybody else. He, he ran faster and worked harder, and he got all the cattle, and then uh, eventually he bought the commission firm there. And then it was that the Joplin Commission Firm, wasn't it? He worked Joplin Commission Firm, and then uh, he, he's running with his sweetheart, uh, Christy Blevins, and then uh, that was a sweetheart. They got married when they was 18 years old. Jackie will admit to you, he probably wasn't thinking about it at the time, but uh, when he and Christy ended up getting married, it was handy that her dad owned the asphalt company there in town. Yeah, that didn't hurt a thing. So he, uh, he ended up... Uh, uh, forming B and M Cattle Company, which was Blevins and Moore, and B and M Cattle Company used to be a big, big deal. You guys have kind of changed it up now, but uh, but uh, Dale Blevins uh, was instrumental in, in getting Jackie to where he was at. Jackie began uh, partnering with Steve Owens, who married his wife Christie's, uh, one of her sisters, right? And Steve Owens uh, and Jackie were partners for many, many years. Steve Barnes was not a cattleman. He was a good man, but he was not a cattleman and never really claimed to be, I don't believe. He owned millions of them or his share in them, but he was just not a cattleman. And I'm sure glad that they broke partnership and Steve went and did his thing and Jackie and the boys took theirs because it was going to kill Steve if you stayed with him because you were a loose cannon. And, and I mean, Jackie... Jackie's buying cattle faster than Steve can get them hedged. I mean, he, he, he can't do it fast enough, and I mean, it, it's blowing his mind. He, he just he can't understand all the millions of dollars they got on a handshake, you know. You give a doped up trucker, you know, the paperwork and say, tell him to send me a check, would you? <laughs> he, he couldn't understand that. It, 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 it was unbelievable. <laughs> and he was just nervous all the time, and he's not a nervous kind of a guy, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, Steve Owens, uh, they, they ended up, uh, uh, when the boys got bigger, Jackie's boys and him and his wife, Christy, they had, had three children, had Amy, uh, her son Dustin is, uh, works hard in the sale, he's instrumental in the sale there at, at Joplin Regional Stockyards, and then he had Bailey and Skyler. Skyler told me today, he said, I didn't even know I had a dad until I was 18 years old, <laughs> but they're just like him. 
Skyler's got more of his mother in him, and, and Christy was a wonderful woman. She was a real sweet lady. And in all the chaos that went on at the sail barn, when you went in there and papers were flying, she was always sweet, you know, and, and whatever he needed, she'd take care of. But uh, I don't know, Skyler's got a little bit of Christy in him, but uh, Bailey's all Jackie. <laughs> and Bailey's not quite as bad anymore, but he was ornery as cat shit at one time. And they said, they said, Jackie was at least that hungry back in them days. But, uh, but the boys are spitting images of him as they've grown into adulthood. Uh, they've become partners there, and, and they, they, they all auctioneer. Uh, I was surprised here within the last year. They, they've hired Russell Sleep, world champion livestock auctioneer, to come in there uh, because because of some of that same reason that Bailey Blue got the, the lawsuit filed against him. <laughs> they, had, they, had, they had too many orders, you know, he couldn't do it all. But, uh, um, so, they, so they won their old job in stock yards in, in the early 90s. Jackie thought, we might need to get a little bigger than this. So they started construction of Joplin Regional Stockyards on I-44 right east of Carthage, Missouri. Uh, if you haven't been by there, it, it, it's breathtaking when you go by. It's still breathtaking to me when you go by. Um, Catfish told me earlier that he, he guessed it might have cost around six million when they built it. It would be more like 30 or 40 million today. I mean, you can, uh, you can ask Jay Romine what the new, uh, uh, the new stockyards, how much? 11 million? Well, it, it's, a, it's a short place, and he can handle 15, 16,000 cattle out there with the, with, the out, with the traps out back and all the, uh, the you gotta have, gotta have a roof there, guys. The rains in that country, you can't have an open air stockyard, Brian. But, uh, but Jackie's wife, uh, she had various levels of success on keeping the rain on Jackie, and uh, God love her. She, she, she did as good as she could there. But uh, they, they built an empire. And uh, I don't know if there's any truth to the rumor that Taylor Sheridan is going to be making a Yellowstone South uh, miniseries about dropping regional stockyards and everything that goes with. But it would be good. I guarantee you. It would be good. And the crew that runs with Jackie, his family, and, and the regular buyers that he has there and the people that work out back, I think he brought 80 people here today. <laughs> They're proud of him and he's proud of them and they, they just work it together, guys. But uh, it's, it's, it's been quite a journey. Uh, you know, Jack had got the stock up, built up good and, and I mean, he was rolling and going and got through the wreck of 2014, uh, or, the, or the, the big bang of 2014, soon to be a wreck of 2015. Uh, he, he, we weathered that, and uh, little did he know within just a couple of short years he was gonna have a, a bigger weathering than he'd ever had. But in a span of four months, Jackie lost his wife, his best friend, and his grandson. I don't know how he stood it. But uh, his wife uh, got a disease there and, uh, and, and succumbed to it pretty fast. Uh, Dr. Uh, Harold Haskins was a prince of a man. I mean, if you didn't know Doc Haskins, you're missing out. Because he was a great, great guy. I mean, just. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> old Doc Haskins, I tell you what, he, he worked the ring. He was a veterinarian, but he would work the ring for 10 hours. He just wanted to be in the middle of it all the time. And, uh, and just, he loved to joke, and he, he was just a great guy. But, but those four months, I can't imagine the stress and the sorrow uh, that, that happened in Jackie's life. And, and uh, they just had to regroup and get after it and keep going. And they did. But uh, 
Jackie told me one time, they asked him about being in the cattle business. He says, I'm not in the cattle business. I'm in the people business. I don't deal with the cattle. A lot of times it has to do with the cattle, but you're in the people business, right? That's exactly right. You know, that was a quote from Jackie Moore, and I thought that was pretty good. I was talking to somebody about uh, Jackie, and they, they said uh, they remembered one time they were sitting there at the yards, like a Sunday afternoon before the sale the next day, uh, had three pot loads of cattle coming in from one customer. And uh, about the same time, old boy come with a flatbed trailer that was literally wired together with wire panels, had a handful of calves in there. And they said, we better go talk to that guy with the three loads. Jackie said, I'm going to go talk to the guy with the trailer with the wire panels. That's my customer. But uh, got some other things that Jackie said on here. He said, uh, he just told me the other day uh, that he was having one of their big video sales. And uh, in... You guys that own markets and work around them, you know that if, if you own and run a market, you got to be prepared to buy everything that comes through the ring. You hope you don't have to do it, but you got to be prepared, right? Sell bonds the hardest thing in the world to run. If you're running a hardware store, you know you're going to have hammers to buy. If you're running a restaurant, you know you're, there are going to be burgers there for people. If you're running a sale barn, you got to rely on the public for both sides. Uh, it, it's twice as hard as any other business in the world. And, uh, and you have to be a people person to do it. But uh, uh, they, they, they got caught up with one of their big videos and uh, they said, oh my God, we got caught with a bunch of these cattle. And, and Skylar said, hell, they lose a million dollars. Jackie said, we can stand a million, not eight million. We can't do that. <laughs> but uh, it, it's just amazing what they've built there. And I, I called Jackie, progressive. Progressive's kind of a word that maybe people don't really like anymore. It's like sustainable, you know, it's a double-edged sword. But with a progressive market, Jackie is uh, the essential progressive livestock market man. He embraced education. Uh, he embraced um, extension, help from extension. Most, most people, I, and I learned that working with the government, I knew uh, about extension service and stuff like that. Uh, you, the further west you go, uh, the smarter everybody is. They don't need any extension, you know. I might have 400 pound Hereford cows, but they're the best son of a bitches that you can get anywhere. <laughs> but when you go east, you have to embrace extension help, like Elvin Cole. He was, a, he was a livestock specialist there in Mount Vernon for many, many years for his whole life, basically. And he would have meetings, and, and, and I, and I uh, Jackie and I would a lot of times, uh, you know, give talks on, on, on grading cattle, on, on uh, marketing cattle, doing things like that. But the extension could get the people there and you could educate them. Jackie knew that the, the people in his area needed to learn about giving shots and weaning the cattle and doing all that kind of thing because they didn't know how to do it. And so he needed to help them do it. And they would, they would trust him and they would listen to him if he asked them to do it. But uh, look back, when I left USDA and started uh, reporting the market for profit instead of non-profit, uh, went with DV Auction. It was, it was pretty seamless there because Jackie had been a DV Auction broadcaster since 2002. 21 years ago, Jackie started broadcasting his sale on this newfangled thing called the internet. And it was one of the first four or five sale barns that did it. Most of them said, I don't want my customers to know what I'm doing. I don't want them seeing me do it. Jackie was all about it. Now everybody's on there. Uh, he, you know, more progressive things he did. He started uh, having wean back sales. One of the first big stockyards to start having wean back sales. Uh, he had his own protocol on the right shots and stuff to give. Uh, had their own ear tags uh, with uh, JRS back programs on it. Uh, you know, you just don't hear those kinds of things going on. He, um, he started doing receiving stations to try to reach out and grab customers uh, as far as he could start doing that. Uh, 
especially going down in towards the southeast where they didn't weren't getting the price that they can get. Uh, he started a commingling program. Most of you guys, that just gives you a headache to think about a commingling deal. Jackie started a commingling deal. He doesn't charge the producer anything. You got five odd calves to sell, bring them in. We'll sell them with the loads at the high time at 11 o'clock in the morning. Who would have thought of that? I, I, get, I get tickled at the co mingling program because when he started it, he had some outfit out in Nebraska that was going to give it, analyze these cattle. They were going to put them in a box and measure how much room they took in the box, and they were going to sort the cattle for them and everything. And Jack is like, I don't know. Put it in there if you want it, but I'm not buying the thing. <laughs> and they ran that for a while, and they had 500 pound yearlings in there with 500 pound ball and calves, and it just didn't work very good. So pretty soon they just had no Boise this way or that way, but it works pretty good, don't it? For a guy that's got a handful of calves that don't fit together, he can sell them in a load lot. And the thing that really amazes me is how Jackie was able to get that co-mingling where he could sell those cattle on ring weights, not on in weights like they do back east, on ring weights. And if the cattle come in too full, they shrink them a little bit. And if they, they come in gant, they, they give them a little bit of plus. But that, that's not easy to do. He was able to do that. He, uh, he publishes the Cattleman's News uh, that Mark Harmon does. Uh, 10,000 circulation every month, Mark, going to 10 different states. And it's free. And they will mail it to you for free. People still like to do that. Uh, started out in in-house videos, eventually started calling it primetime video. Uh, the, the big bang sale that he had on the 4th of July had nearly 50,000 cattle on there. Unbelievable that he was able to do all that kind of thing. But uh, Jackie's just been an icon. Uh, I'm, as long as I've known him, I've admired and supported him. He supported me. And uh, we've had a good friendship, but uh, I'm, I'm really impressed with his whole family and his whole crew and everybody that's here, always have been. Uh, they do a great job. But, uh, he's, he's, he's pretty much responsible for keeping a lot of those small producers in the four state area in business by educating them and getting their cattle sold at market price. Jackie will tell you once we get rid of a few odds there at 6 o'clock in the morning, he says, we're going to establish this market for the day. And, that, and all the cattle are going to bring the market. That's what you're entitled to. You're entitled to the market. No more than that. He doesn't want the, the whorehouse top quotes for the day that I put on my feeder flash every day. He says, I want all the cattle to bring the market. That's what people are entitled to is the market. And I'm going to make sure that they bring it whether I got to buy all of them or not, but that's what they're going to bring is whatever the market is. But uh, I, I respect him for that. Uh, here in the few, uh, last few years, he and one of his uh, friends, a good buyer there, Scott Kirby, started a, uh, they bought a feedlot right out here at Cimarron, Kansas. That was a whole new deal to Jackie, getting into the feedlot business. Uh, they started feeding cattle out there. He wanted to be involved in the, in the marketing of the fat cattle. He said, we're going to fix this fat cattle deal here right now. We, we want a little more price discovery in this fat cattle deal. We're going to sell these cattle cash, by God. And so he went out there. They started getting some cattle fat coming out of the back end of that feedlot. Jackie's out there looking at them, and he thought they was ready. And by God, he's going to teach these packer buyers how to, how to bid on these cattle. He's walking along the, the feed out of there and he kicks over this lamp. He, he picks up this lamp and he starts knocking the dust off of it and a genie pops out. Jackie's like, oh my God. And he looks at this genie and the genie says, oh, thank God you got me out of here. He said, I'm giving you two wishes, one today and one tomorrow. He said, what would it be? And Jackie says, oh my God. He says, I'd like to give it to these packer buyers. He said, he said, I want the market on these fat cattle to be $5 a pound. Five bucks a pound today. Poof. Fat cattle market was five bucks a pound, and Jackie's responsible for selling the whole show list. 
Next day, Jackie comes back, gets that lamp, rubs it a little bit. Jeannie comes out. Today is your second wish. What would you like to have it uh, for a wish today? And Jackie says, I'd like for that fat cattle market to be $5 a pound again today. And he said, we did that yesterday. He said, yeah, but today I'm going to sell them some bitches. <laughs> but Jackie uh, and his, his wife, Shelly, uh, he found a woman that, that enjoys the things that he enjoys as much as he does. And uh, I follow him on Facebook, and she's there all the time. You know, if Jackie's looking at cattle, she's there. Uh, she loves to rope. Jackie loves to rope. They love the Western way of life. They love the grandkids. Uh, I don't know if the rumor is true or not, but uh, a lot of times on a Monday afternoon when the sale's over, they might check the weather in Florida or Arizona and get on the big jet airplane and, and go out to the one that's going to be the nicest for the next two or three days. And I think that's great. As much as he's worked, uh, needs to enjoy it a little bit. But if he gets a phone call, I guarantee you he'll answer it, especially if it's for cattle. But uh, uh, and I would like to share that we've been following the receipts. Uh, and it's had a lot to do with the drought and the way things are going. But uh, this year, in 2023, for the calendar year, Joplin Regional Stockyards will be the largest stockyard in the country. I'd like to introduce to you my friend Jackie Moore. Thank you. Well, you see all these people that's over here with me tonight. Everybody stand up. Not only have I got family, but you see all the people right there? They're very dear to me. I love every one of them. You know, I'm a hard driver, and I'm a, and I'm a pusher and a shover, but you know, I believe in giving a man a job and letting him do it. And I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot of people there who works 100 hours a day, and there's just as many of them back home doing what they're not doing today because we're here. They're out there back there working and doing We do a lot of business, and, we, and we, we shove, and we push, and we work hard, and I've did that my whole life. And, you know, I've got a lot of family here, and, you know, I've got uh, nine grandchildren, Shelly's got five grandchildren. I got three children. She's got two children. They're all here. All of you stand up. You know, uh, you know, I never did anything that I've ever done in my life for the money. I did it for the. I never figured out if it was the one to succeed or the uh, the fear of failure. You know, I've, I've often wondered about that in my life. Which one was the driving force in, in uh, what I've done? But, uh, you know, I've just been blessed. That's all I can tell you. You know, as, a, as I came along, I've always wanted to give everybody the chance to do better in their life and, uh, and to give them the, all the tools that I knew of and was in my reach. I wanted them to have them to have them the tools of their reach to be able to succeed. And, you know, it's, uh, I did a lot of things to that my, in my life. You know, I was, uh, I was born in a three-room log house. on the side of a bluff in Kingston, Arkansas. Wilcox, you know where it's at. That's where I come from, and I can tell you this much about our calves sold in the fall of the year. I knew how they sold with how we lived for the whole next year. And I'll tell you what I think about the auction business, and I've lived by this my entire life. When a man backs up to my dock and unloads them calves, and he said, here, Jack, here's my livelihood. Here's I'm gonna send my kids to school, I'm gonna buy their shoes, I'm going to make my old farm, my old truck payment. I'm going to give it to you to take care of it for me. That's a pretty big obligation to put on a man's back belly. And if you ain't able to do that, you need to take your sign down. And the day that I can't, the day I'll take it down and I'll go home. But, you know, it's... Uh, my boys and my, and my grandkids are all great hands, and they do a wonderful job. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people in this industry industry always want to dictate to their kids and their children and, and even their employees of what they should be able to do. But in my whole lifetime, I never want to be a hindrance to anybody because I think everybody needs to do the things that they can do and become all they become. 
If my kids and my grandchildren are not better at what I do, I failed them in some way. Because the only legacy I got in this world is all of them. And that's what I'm going to leave on this world. On this world. That's it. I got that. I went to a guy tried to buy me out one time, and he flew me to Houston, Texas, and he said, uh, you know, Jack, you've done good, but you know you could do a lot better if you just listened to me. He said, you know, what kind of legacy you want to leave in this world? I said, I, and you know, I got to thinking about that, and it really made me mad. And I had all my children with me. And I looked across the table, and I said, you see those children? That's my legacy. About a year after I'm dead and gone, there's, it's, there's a boy there in Joplin, Missouri, that long blonde hair, and he's young. He's a going son of a buck. You know, he was Amy and Sky and Bailey's dad. You know, I can see his face, but I can't remember his name. That's life. So all we got to leave is the people that we've touched and the people that we loved and the relationships we've had is all we're going to leave on this world. I appreciate everything that winners have done for us and everything that and the recognition they gave to me, but there's the people that need the recognition because they made me what I am. Thank you all. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, I do want to say something. Thought long and hard about what to uh, to finalize tonight's uh, festivities, and you saw the the legacies that Jackie had talked about, and, and Rob, and, and you see Joey up here, and the, the families, the Santa Mossos that we had talked about earlier. Folks, all these people that we've inducted into this Cattle Marketing Hall of Fame have given a pivotal. They've given the ultimate sacrifice their entire life, their entire careers, to pave the way for all of us. Each and every one of us are indebted and uh, will be that way from now on. I want to challenge my generation and the generation behind me. And the reason I say this is this. I talked a little earlier about the piece of the pie. We're starting now at this point in time as livestock producers to get a little more piece of the pie. Are we there yet? Based on cutout values, no. But with you folks, your intestinal fortitude, your desire, your moral makeup, we're going to get there. Okay, I'm going to say something that I never dreamt that I would ever say. But there are countries now, for the first time in our history, whose currency is of equal or more valuable than the U.S. dollar. Okay? We have a group of people, whether they're elected fairly or not, that represent us. I told you about being forgotten, about being rural Americans. Folks, I'm going to challenge you tonight. My generation, the generation behind me, it's our opportunity. Those folks that I talked about whose currencies are growing have tasted your product. You raise a genetically superior product. It's something that you ought to be incredibly proud of. You raise and you own the land that's required to produce that product. There's power there. There's power. Told you a little bit about rural American being non-confrontational and not very verbal. It's our opportunity to do that now, to be proud of where we are, to be proud of what we do. Okay? A lot of you, I can only imagine if Rob or Jackie or Beef or Cowboy Jack or Jack Hunter, I can only imagine if they were in a school board meeting and a parent said, you know, we're thinking about installing litter boxes in the bathrooms. I can imagine what, what these gentlemen would say. Folks, with all jokes aside, it's happening, okay? There's a group of people in Washington that don't want us here. They don't want entrepreneurial spirits. They don't want free-thinking individuals who own land and produce protein. I believe in you. I'm one of you. We all are. Let's take that to heart. Let's realize what God has given us, the blessings of that, and understand that if you see these kids sitting around these tables, we want them and their grandkids to be right here in 20 years. If we don't all pull together and fight together, the, op the opposition's strong, folks. They're well-funded. But you own the products. You raise the most superior protein this world has ever known. Be proud of that. We, from the bottom of our hearts, this is Darcy's deal. Folks, if you get an opportunity to thank her, this is, again, something that we feel very passionate about. We're going to be right back here next year. 
with another class to join the finest people in our industry. Folks, God bless you. Come see us tomorrow. We're going to have an outstanding contest. But with that, I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. On behalf of everybody, Brian, Darcy, Mark, Katrina, the entire family, thank you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless you.